I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we have an amazing array of homes to show off, including this modernist retreat upstate. And we are in Tribeca to visit the home of the late Nobel Prize winning author Toni Morrison. We visit this writer's cabin in Greenwich, Connecticut that was built to inspire. Plus, we are in Brooklyn for a look at this modern minimalist renovation inside a Romanesque mansion. But first, we are in Westchester at the family home of designers Everick and Lisa Brown. A friend said that our home feels like it gives you a hug. In many ways, our home is our dream project. Let's take a look. Welcome to Open House NYC, everyone. Today I am coming to you from this one-of-a-kind duplex in the famed American Thread Building in Tribeca. This home is the perfect blend of traditional downtown loft living and uptown luxury. The open concept main floor is an entertainer's dream space with plenty of areas to lounge and relax or mix and mingle, depending on your mood plus a dining area and a kitchen to match. Check out these distinct architectural details like these ionic columns and massive arched windows. It's a wow factor every time you open the front door. The serene principal suite occupies the entire upstairs and is the perfect place to wind down at the end of a long day. It's one of five bedrooms in this 3,800 square foot home. We have got some great homes to explore this week, so let's get started in Yorktown Heights, Westchester with partners in design and life, Everick and Lisa Brown. Their unique family home is both their aesthetic workshop and a fascinating, fun retreat from the city. See for yourself. Hello, I'm Lisa. Hi, I'm Everick. Welcome to our home in Yorktown Heights, New York. A friend said that our home feels like it gives you a hug, and that is exactly how we want all of our projects to feel. In many ways, our home is our dream project. Let's take a look. This is the soul of our house. The style of this kitchen is mid-century French cafe. It's all about being comfortable and warm. We cook up a storm, we have a good party, we have a place where everyone can express themselves on our chalkboard. This is definitely the more casual dining area, but after I've cooked a great meal, I hand it off to my husband, who's curated a beautiful dining room table. Thanks, gorgeous. <laughs> And we use the dining room not only for dining, we do work here. It fulfills all of our living needs. So while it may look like I've designed the library just to look good, it actually is a working library. I use it for resourcing and to gain inspiration. These books here I actually grew up with. This is an encyclopedia on black culture. I blend vintage into this space because I find inspiration. They just don't make it like they used to anymore. So these executive Saarinen chairs, I left in their original fabric. Let me go see where my wife is. Finally, I have the bedroom of my dreams after recent renovation where we removed the loft, allowing for full exposure of these beautiful 20-foot vaulted ceilings. We have a seating sofa that fits perfectly into this space, allowing for a great place for me to meditate in the morning. I said this was my dream bedroom. Now, let me show you my dream bathroom. Welcome to my spa. I was really specific about the type of bathroom that I wanted. I wanted dark. I wanted it to be cozy. I wanted no door on my shower so that it could be completely open. We have one vanity for Everick, one for me. While everything in this room was chosen by me, Everick curated it perfectly. And that's why we make such a great team. I wonder where he is. Let's go find him. Hey. Hi. Where have you been? I've been around. So you're in our favorite room? It's the analog room. It's bereft of any electronics and it forces interaction and connection. We play games, we dance, we sing. One of the things that's really important for us is that the room is comfortable, that people feel like they can sit on the floor, sit on the furniture, and touch everything in it. A game table. Everybody thinks they can beat me in back. <laughs> and we can. Jacks. I can. And this also serves as a great serving table for... Desserts, drinks. Yeah, exactly. 
If you're looking for an idea to spruce up a closet, what better thing to do than to create a bar? Exactly. Yeah, Don't right, okay. The good stuff about me. I know, honey. <laughs> okay. Thank you for coming. We hope you enjoyed this tour of our home. I'm so lucky to be married to my interior designer who does an incredible job of designing and making it comfortable. See you next time. Coming up just after the break, we are in Brooklyn to check out this modern renovation of a classic mansion. You are not going to want to miss this. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now we're in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn with architect Simon Arnold. Simon was tasked with renovating a top floor duplex in a former Romanesque mansion. Simon opened up the space to reflect modern sensibilities and in the process uncovered plenty of original architectural detail that he seamlessly integrated into his modern design. I'm Simon Arnold. I'm the principal architect of our Brooklyn-based firm, Arnold Studio. Welcome to my project in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn. We are in a grand mansion designed by the architect Montrose Morris in the late 1800s in the Romanesque revival style. Today, the building is occupied by apartments, including my clients, which is a duplex on the top two floors. When you walk into the apartment, you enter into an open plan living space. We removed the interior dividing walls and exposed the ceiling structure. We stained the exposed wood with black pigment and painted the steel a very dark gray. The wonderful surprise of this process was that as the outside light changes and as you walk around the space, the wood appears to change color. It gives the apartment a very unique and dynamic character. Because the apartment is quite small, we needed to focus on maximizing the open space while making sure that all of the service spaces and storage elements could still be incorporated. Our design strategy was to build in and push these elements to the perimeter, freeing up the center. The walls are painted white, while the wood floors and the dark wood ceiling give the space warmth, and their juxtaposition gives the space an unexpected feeling of size. The clients were passionate about maintaining a balance between the original historic details yet creating a contemporary open domestic space. The center of the living room features a working fireplace. Removing years of stain revealed a beautiful mahogany wood. Though our strategy was to keep the space open, the one piece we detached from the exterior walls was the large eat-in kitchen counter. It is a black monolith carved out of soapstone. Opposite the island is an integrated storage unit. It has a recess with integrated cooktop and a built-in fridge, and it fulfills our strategy of incorporating all of the storage elements into the walls. Upstairs, the main bedroom is a quiet haven within the roof line. You can see the various pitches of the roof folding this way and that. We painted the floors, walls, and ceiling white. It creates an almost cloud-like floating atmosphere. You are nestled into the roof line of the city. To emphasize this, the bed floats in the center of the room, which allows the walls and ceiling around you to work freely in a similar manner to how we designed the lower floor. Here again, we pushed all the storage to the outside walls and built in this wardrobe. The bathroom is an exhibition of natural materials. The floor tiles are hand-cast cement tiles. The bathtub surround is large format porcelain and all of the fixtures are unlacquered brass. The goal of this project was to maximize a small space and create a contemporary environment in this historic structure. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look. Coming up in just a few, we are in Greenwich, Connecticut to check out a brand new take on a writer's retreat. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we are in Greenwich, Connecticut with architect Eric J. Smith. Eric was hired to design a writer's studio on his client's bucolic Greenwich, Connecticut property, a place in which the muse is always welcome. Welcome. 
My name is Eric Smith. I'm an architect, and for most of my career, I've built traditional homes based on classical design principles. Today, I'd like to share with you something a little bit different. This contemporary writer's studio, purpose-built for the pursuit of poetry. I believe that every home tells a story. The story of this home begins right here in the backwoods of Southern Connecticut. It was while walking through these woods that my client began to reflect on his boyhood fascination with Thoreau's cabin. He asked me to design a place inspired by Thoreau's cabin. Not a replication, but a reinterpretation of it. A place of solitude, solace, and the pursuit of art. Approaching head on like this, one only sees walls of layered stone in many ways as impenetrable as a blank sheet of paper. I wanted the design of this building to actually represent the creative process of an artist. That begins with this entry portal. It's not unlike any choice that an artist makes, whether they're going to start the process or not. One has to choose to enter. Now for the real surprise. As you enter, on either side are bookshelves filled with books of poetry. It's as if there are thousands of words cheering you on. So the bookcases and the other built-ins that we have here have been pulled away from the building, almost as if floating within the stone enclosure. The space compresses with a lower ceiling height. I did this as a transition from the exterior scale of the trees and nature to a more human scale of this retreat. You'll also notice that we brought the exterior stone walls inside, giving a sense of permanence, of solidness. The floor and ceilings are fumed American white oak, straight grained as if right off the Sawyer's Mill. So as you look at the details, the craftsmanship is self-evident. What appears simple is masterly. So the client wanted this building to function as a home. This kitchen was laid out somewhat like a ship's galley. We have a built-in refrigerator, cabinet, concealed cabinets up above. And this countertop is actually from a 200-year-old oak tree. We kept the live edge to kind of speak back to the nature of oak, both in its milled form and its natured form. When it's time for a nap or a little recharge, we built in this berth. Below what looks like a regular counter and cabinet, there's actually a pull-out bed to recharge. All of this floats within the stone enclosure. And speaking of floating, that's exactly what I wanted this writer's room to feel like. It's cantilevered out over the stream bed, and it floats amongst the trees, almost as if we're a tree dweller. In this three-sided writer's room, at the two ends, there are two symmetrical balconies. Sliding glass opens so that you can step out and back into the nature that you left at the entry portal. Every writer obviously needs a good writing desk. And we custom built this desk inspired by the chair I'm sitting in, which was a Sam Maloof chair. And there's nothing better than a comfortable chair when you're working hard over your desk on your next poem. But the real focal point of this structure is this piece of glass. The main piece of glass in this writer's studio measures 16 feet long and weighs over 2,000 pounds. And the amazing view, 360 degrees, that we're able to see out into nature. The space itself is focused opposite the bed to a large rock, which we affectionately call the writer's rock as opposed to a writer's block. Other than the treetops, this is the highest point around. So it was obvious that we had to create this rooftop terrace to take advantage of this place. Small in size, yet expansive in experience, this studio, in its very essentialism, suggests with thoughtful design, we can live creatively and comfortably in sync with the nature around us. Thanks for coming. Coming up, we are sticking with the literary theme with a tour of the late Toni Morrison's perfectly preserved Tribeca Loft. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're in Tribeca at the former home of the late great Nobel laureate Toni Morrison. Her bright and airy loft was her New York City refuge and is exactly as she left it filled with the things that inspired her. See for yourself. Welcome, I'm Amanda Brainerd with Brown Harris Stevens, and today we're going to see 66 Leonard, apartment 10A, which is the loft of the late and great Toni Morrison. This 2,500 square foot, three bedroom loft is located in one of the best streets in all of Tribeca. Representing the sale of this loft has personal meaning for me because I'm also a novelist, and being here makes me feel like maybe some of Toni Morrison's brilliance will rub off on me. Mm -hmm. 
One of the most remarkable features of this loft is that there are these beautiful custom bookshelves in all of the public spaces, even here in the dining room, which indicates how important books were in the life of Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison was meticulous about cataloging her library. This entire group of shelves is all novels and all in alphabetical order. The dining area in this loft is very generous, and here she had a formal dining table for dinner parties, but also you can imagine her having a cup of coffee with a friend at this more intimate table. Here's a fun little anecdote. According to Tony's son, Tony used to rub this Buddha for good luck. Another remarkable thing about this apartment is every part of it is designed to be cozy and comfortable including this beautiful living room where I'm sitting in front of this cozy gas fireplace. The living room has a wall of north-facing windows which provides all-day consistent ambient light and beautiful open views over the New York City skyline. And also the apartment has artifacts that are from Tony's travels. And these drawings above the fireplace were done by Tony Morrison's son Slade. Sitting on this sofa, I imagine Tony Morrison in quiet conversation with friends. This library is one of my favorite rooms in the whole apartment. There's the computer desk where, of course, Tony had to answer emails, but she also maintained her writing desk where she wrote by hand. And this built-in bookshelf behind me contains history and biographies, all alphabetized, but also displays some of the more interesting artifacts of this apartment, such as the original artwork for Beloved, this key presented to Tony, and photographs of Tony and her family. Here she is with Quincy Jones. I think every dream library has a ladder. This one was custom built for Tony to make the top shelves of every bookcase accessible. This is the main bedroom of the apartment, a wonderful spacious room with beautiful open exposures north and east over Tribeca. One of the other things I love about this bedroom is this glamorous custom built in with these antique lanterns. The main bedroom is very gracious. There's a huge walk-in closet, a beautiful spot for a dressing table with a mirror, a massive main bathroom with a giant soaking tub and double sinks. And the bedroom itself is even large enough to have a sofa on which to read. Not only is this loft a fabulous apartment in and of itself, it's also a major piece of literary history. I'm so glad I could show it to you. Don't go anywhere because when we come back, we are upstate to check out the former home of a design original. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Well, we are wrapping things up in Garrison, New York at the former home of mid-century industrial designer Russell Wright. Welcome to Manitoga, the Russell Wright Design Center. I'm Allison Cross, the executive director, and I can't wait to show you around. In 1942, Russell and Mary Wright purchased 75 acres of what was an abandoned logging and quarry site. Over the next 34 years, he transformed it into a place of astounding beauty, including miles of hiking trails, his home, and studio. Russell Wright was a leading industrial designer in mid-century. He is often credited with introducing modernism to America. He built his home and studio, Dragon Rock, from 1957 to 1961. The principles of modernism were softened by nature. The entry into the studio, the knob itself is a stone. Three of the walls are windows, and as we look out, it's a worm's eye view, so we're cradled by nature and the landscape beyond. So the principal room is divided into three areas. The work area, two sofas, which was a gathering area for socialization, and then his sleeping area, which is divided simply by an open shelving unit. You can see a couple pieces of furniture designed by Russell Wright in the studio. We have the round Lazy Susan in the gathering area, and then the bedside table, and it is of blonde wood, which of course was a modernist approach to wood furniture.
Here we're under the pergola that connects the studio to the main house. Beyond the quarry pool, you can see Dragon Rock. When Russell Wright's daughter Annie was a little girl, she thought that the rock looked like a dragon drinking water from the quarry. So in the main house, Wright continues the principles of modernism. So one of the first things you notice upon entering the space is this wall of windows. In fact, he incorporated the sliding glass doors full wall height to connect inside to outside. I hope you enjoyed the tour and a glimpse of Russell Wright's modernist home and that you'll visit us at Manitoga in Garrison, New York. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. How about love? Share these homes, you know?